God. God, I pray, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, that you just brought your spirit, God, bless your word tonight, God. God, I pray, God, for the needs of your people, God. God, for the physical, for the financial, God, for the spiritual, God, for the loneliness and the depressed, God. I pray, God, right now, God, that you just bring us together, link in our hearts, God. We just thank you, God, for this time and this opportunity, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We welcome you this evening. Amen. You know what? Uh, we're glad to have you, those of you who tuned in this evening online. Amen. You know what? It's a blessing to, to have you a part of what God is doing here in the house of God. Um, we got a few announcements. Uh, give me a second. I'm going to pull up. Uh, we got a few announcements. And uh, just want to remind you of our regular services every uh, Sunday morning at 10 a.m., every Sunday evening at 6 also, every Wednesday, amen, at 7 p.m., amen, I want to remind you, amen, uh, to be a part of our, of our services, amen, uh, our Wednesday night service, we're doing our, our midweek Bible study, uh, in that Bible study, we're doing the, the book of Romans, uh, but we're in chapter 15 now, uh, we're almost done, just got two chapters left, um, uh, it's a good opportunity to come and, and get the word of God, verse by verse, amen, to hear how it is. Amen. So I want to encourage you to be a part of that, to read ahead um, and have questions available. The, our Wednesday night Bible study, if you're inside the building or if you're online, amen, you watch us live. It is interactive, amen. If you watch us on a replay on YouTube or anything uh, later on on our Facebook page, amen, feel free to type in and add your comments and, and questions and I will, I will respond Amen. I look forward to all the comments and questions that come up. And uh, I look at them even when they come in a week late, two weeks late, whatever it is. Amen. So if you want to go back through any of them, amen, I will respond to all notifications. So, you know, just be a part of that. Amen. That's Wednesday at 7. And, of course, don't forget Sunday morning at 10 and Sunday evening at 6. Amen. These are all the announcements. Amen. Uh, we're going to flip an offering. Amen. Let's worship God. Hallelujah. We praise you, God. I worship you, Lord. Hey amen. Up on the screen, hey amen, we have our uh, the, the apps available. Hey amen. We have the Zelle app, hey amen. We have the Pop Money app, hey amen. So if you have, uh, if, you, if you're uh, unable to make it to the building, hey amen, you can give online. Those of you who are watching at home, hey amen, uh, we encourage you to be a part of the church, hey amen. You know what? Uh, I was sharing this morning, hey amen, after service, that you know what? You know, we're a church. We're, we're, we're growing. We're, we're, we're developing. We're trying to you know, through this time of COVID, it's tough. It's really hit the churches really hard. Amen. We made our rent last week. Amen. And the account was left for $4.14 when we're done. Amen. Amen. So you know what? Uh, um, let's not let the church of God struggle. Amen. Let's uh, let's uh, be a part of what God's doing, a part of the move of God. Amen. So those of you who watch, amen, faithfully, amen, uh, give, give to the ministry uh, that God will keep the doors open. And they got to continue to move, amen, mightily, amen. So use the apps available. You can also send, amen, to the building, to the check, to the address of the building. You can find us information on our Facebook page, amen. We encourage you to be a part of it, amen. I will respond to you to let you know we did receive your offering, amen. So God bless you guys, amen. So let's bow our hearts as we bless the gift and the giver. Come on, Father, we thank you, God, for this time, God, of giving. God, I pray, God, for both the gift and the giver, God. God, I pray, God, that you open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing upon them, God. God, that your blessing would overflow. God, I pray, God, for those, God, tonight, God, who aren't able to give, God. And God, that you would just reach into their hearts, God, and touch them, God. And God, for you know their hearts, God. And I pray, God, that you just bless them, God, that they would have the ability, God, to give, God, uh, generously into your works, God. And we thank you, my Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's see that song. There is power. There is power, power, wonder, working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder, working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Amen. You make sure you be faithful, amen, with your tithes and offerings. Amen. As the house of God, amen, moves forward. Amen. situated here. I titled uh, this sermon <coughs> Simple. Your words. Amen. Your words, not mine. 
Hey man, I do that for a living. I do investigations for underground utilities. And uh, it always comes down to who said what, where, how, and when, and why. And uh, I'm pretty good about documenting conversations. And at the end, I always say, well, it was your words. You're the one that said. And, and, and as we talk, amen, uh, what happens is we, we, uh, we as Christians, we can open our mouths and say certain things. And if we're not careful, amen, the words that we say can be the words, amen, that, that, that we allow to remove us from the love of Christ. Amen. See, because the world that we live in, the world that, that, that we live in, is not a world given to us by mistake. I'm talking to you, believer. It's not a world that's given to you by mistake. The world that we live in is the world that we've created. If, if, you, if your world is full of love, well, that world of love is not by mistake. If, you're, if, you're, if your world is full of, of happiness, it's not by mistake. If your world is full of Christianity, and, and brothers and sisters in Christ, well, that's not by mistake. It's, it's something you developed and that, you, that you've uh, been able to do. It is not by mistake if your world is full of anger, if your world is full of jealousy, hatred, unforgiveness. It's not by mistake if your world is full of, bit, full of bitterness. These are things that we create. See, the word, the word, the words that we speak, a lot of times these, these words, amen, they're, uh, they're, they, they, they brew from deep within inside of us, amen. They come out of our mouths because of the words that we have decided to use. These are the words that we've, we've decided to be a part of our life. And a lot of times we blame, amen, the enemy for this. We're going to get to all that. But first, I want to read, amen, out of the book of James. I'll give you a moment to turn there. Book of James, chapter 3. Beginning with verse 5 through 10. Book of James, chapter 3, verse 5 through 10. Amen. The Bible says, Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. See how great a forest, a little fire kindles. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. Iniquity is another word for sin. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature. And it is set on fire by hell. For, it, for every kind of beast and bird of reptile and creature of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. With it, we bless our God and Father. And with it, we curse men who have been made in the similitude of God or in the likeness of God. Out of the same mouth proceeds blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. God, I pray God you bless your word in Jesus' name. Amen. As Christians, we have a responsibility of character. It's your responsibility to have a character. In tough times, a man's character will be displayed. Let's make it even. In tough times, a woman's character will be displayed. Man or woman, your character will be displayed in tough times. The way you act, the way you respond, uh, the things that you say, I recently, a man, uh, 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 had a conversation with somebody who was upset at, at work. And it wasn't somebody that worked for our company. It was somebody that worked for another company. And, 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 I, and I, I, more often than I, than I like to, I have to have these conversations with people that they just don't like. Because it's, it has to do with 
legalities, amen, what the law says according to the job that I do. And, and, and Christian man, the guy that I know to be a man of God that we've spoken about church and the Bible and scripture, knowledgeable man who's been on the board of directors at churches, amen. And he gets upset because it wasn't going his way. And we meet face to face, amen. And he's upset, he's letting me know he's upset to the point that he begins to cuss. And I said, dear gosh, out of that mouth, we bless God and we curse men and the scripture becomes real. See, as, as, as Christians, we have that responsibility of character. We have been commissioned to the call, to the call of duty by Jesus Christ and an untamed tongue will bring dishonor. In Luke chapter 6, 45, it says, Jesus is talking, he says, a good man out of the good treasures of his heart brings forth good. And an evil man out of the evil treasures of his heart brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. Pastor Rick Merritt had said uh, one time on, uh, he said, the reason why we speak the way we do is not because of the devil. It's not always the devil's fault. Because the devil doesn't deserve that credit. The reason the words we speak come out of, the, out of our mouth is because we are too lazy to take time to tame our tongue and think before we speak. That was from Pastor Rick Merritt. You guys don't like that? You can look up his Facebook page and talk to him about it. But it is true. The words we speak do not start in the mouth. The words that we speak, they start in our head. You know, we could come up with thoughts in our head, and, and, and just because they're in our head doesn't mean they're in our heart, they're just in our head. But what happens, amen, we can speak, amen, and spew out things that are, that, are, that are tormenting our brain, amen, and our mouth will begin to speak, but it misses our heart. But if we're not careful, those same words, those same thoughts, amen, will work their way all the way down to our heart. There are many things about who we are that defines us. We were all raised differently. Mm -hmm. Even siblings, amen. We we're talking about this earlier, amen, at the service. Even siblings raised in the same house by the same parents, amen, are raised differently. If you have children, amen, you raise your children differently, amen. I can tell you, amen, that my daughter was raised a little different than my sons. The oldest is always raised different than the youngest. And the reason for that is because you're practicing on the older one. You're getting it right, amen. By the time you get to the younger one, amen, two, three kids later, you kind of got the hang of this thing. Mm -hmm. So your kids are raised differently. And if you're a parent, you understand what I'm talking about. And you, you think everyone is raised differently. The neighborhood we grew up in can define who we are and how we act and how we speak. Gang neighborhoods can alter the way you speak. Living in the ghetto, amen, can get you to speak and talk ghetto, amen. You can talk a certain way, amen. I have a habit of, of mimicking whoever, I to, whoever I'm talking to. It's funny because if, I, if I'm talking to somebody, amen, who barely speaks English, no matter what nationality they are, amen, by the time I'm done talking to them, amen, I'm speaking with their accent, amen. Mm -hmm. Instead of them speaking with mine, I'm speaking with them. The place we work. If we work in a factory, amen, we speak like a factory worker, amen. When I was 18 years old, amen, I got a job. And I blame my wife's uncles because I got a job, I was working with them. I was working with my dad, he got me the job, but her uncles worked there too. Didn't speak any Spanish, amen, but they taught me real quick. They taught me all the words I could no longer use, amen, because I gave my life to God. Amen. And, 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 and where you work will, 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 will alter the way you speak. If you work uh, in, 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 as a business professional, I, I work in a place that's business professional, amen, well, the job isn't what my, my, my job is, where I got to speak a certain way 
talk to certain people to get certain uh, information, amen, I got to convey that in reports, so, so my, my language expands and, and, and I have to speak in a professional manner. So our, our environment, amen, can develop who we are in, the, in our speech. I have an aunt, amen, who lives in England, and she's going to be watching this, amen. She watches all of our services on rerun, amen, because I sent them to her, amen. So she's right now, she's listening as she's listening to this on the rerun. She grew up, amen, in L.A. She was born in L.A., raised in California, lived in California her whole life. She's a California girl. When she was about six years old, she moved to England, amen. She, she married this man, and he's a wonderful guy, amen. He's Uncle Alan, amen, great guy. Love him, amen, and you know what? She now lives in England. And and, 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 the, and the thing is, even though she was raised in California, in Southern California, and she grew up here, and she was born here, and she was raised here, and lived 60 years of her life there, amen, here, amen, she now speaks with an English accent. Uh -huh. It's crazy. I always trip out on her. And she says little words, amen, that are, that are, that are unique to the English language, amen. Not the English American language, but the English England language, UK. And she says little words. But we can, our speech, amen, develops because of the environment we put ourselves in and what we've allowed to, to, to enter into our lives, amen. And, and as we grow, amen, those things that we allow into our head, amen, will begin to work its way down to our heart. Watch a child as they grow up. And listen to the words that they use. See how they change over the years and how drastic the change is as they get into high school. Mm -hmm. They change. I have a, I have a, a granddaughter. Right. She's our oldest granddaughter. Beautiful, wonderful. Ain't nothing like grandchildren. But boy, she is the smartest kid I've ever met. And she speaks so intelligently. And I, and I listen to her, and I, she talks to me, and, and, and I'm like, where's the baby that I had? Where does she go? The other day, uh, a gentleman comes across the street, amen, uh, to ask my wife to, if I can go to their house when I get home from work even to, to do something, whatever. My granddaughter was there. So I go, I, I get home from work, so I go, okay, well, I go to the, I go to the, the room, I go, and I go, and I brush my teeth, and my granddaughter walks in. And she calls me Papa. She goes, hey, Papa. She goes, what are you doing? I go, I'm going to brush my teeth. She goes, did you eat yet? I said, no, but I'll eat a little bit. She goes, you didn't eat yet, and but you're brushing your teeth already? I said, no, me, I'm not. I haven't. I'm going to go. I got to go across the street. She goes, oh, you're going to go across the street to go speak to that human? <laughs> to the human? She's like, uh, yeah, the, the human that came over here to ask for your help, <laughs> ask for you to go over there. I go, yes, baby. I'm going to go speak to that human. Amen. We speak. They develop. They develop a language, amen. See, as Christians, we choose our environment. We have been saved. We have been set free. You, you are who you are because of who you have decided to become. Your past, amen. We can't blame our past, Christian. We, we, we want to say, yeah, but you don't understand uh, uh, the way I was raised, the way I grew up, and who I've been around my whole life. You don't understand. I speak this way because of my past. But we seem to forget, amen, that your past has been washed under the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes, amen. See, you speak the way you speak because of the way you have decided to speak. <laughs> the blood of Jesus has set you free. From all the sins of your past. But yet we still want to speak as if we were a sinner. And I'm not only talking about like foul language, amen, because as Christians we can we can we can get away from the foul language, amen. And if you're a Christian and you're saved, amen, you're speaking with foul language, amen, you need to check yourself. Amen. You need to stop that. There's no there's no excuse for that. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between you cussing like a sailor, amen, and getting drunk, amen? You know right from wrong. Yeah. So let's get that out of the way. But what I'm talking about, amen, as Christians, amen, we can speak in ways, amen, that are demeaning, that are hurtful. We can say things like, oh, wow, that's their fault. They never should have did that. Well, I knew that was going to happen. Look how dumb they are. 
We can say things like, like, I don't care, that's their problem, not mine. We can say things like, well, if they wanted to come to church, they should have showed up. I ain't picking them up, I just washed my car. And the words that we speak, amen, will define who we are as a Christian. So your decision, no matter how big or small, it is a direct reflection of who you are and who you are choosing to be. Mm -hmm. It is important to understand this. We spend too much time giving the devil credit right. for things he's not able to do. Mm -hmm. Well, excuse me, let's think of the devil. He did it again. Then what do you let him in your life for? Well, well, the devil, the devil made it, but what are you hanging out with the devil for? What's the devil doing with you? I don't understand that. See, my Bible says, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 54, verse 17, this is what my Bible says. You might want to check your Bible, but my Bible says, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. So if, 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 if the Bible says no weapon formed against me, how can I now blame the devil? Well, the devil made me do it. The devil told me. The devil, you know that stinking devil? He got my stinking thinking. No, he didn't. He didn't do it. So to say the devil, it is the devil, and give him the power is lame. It's lazy. It's, it's a lazy excuse for our own behavior and our own mouth. Why do we allow words to determine who, who we are? When we have a God who has already given so much. With this whole pol politics and stuff like that. I see, I will speak politics to certain people, amen, but I don't speak it to everybody because uh, it, it's just, I'm a Christian before I'm a politician. I'm a Christian before I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a Democrat or Republican, before I pick this side of the aisle, that side, or walk down the middle. I, I don't care, I'm a Christian first. But it amazes me how many Christians want to voice their opinion. Mm -hmm. and, and they say, but it's true. <clears throat> Just because something you feel is true doesn't mean it needs to be repeated. Come on. Well, the world is this, or well, the nation is that. Well, it's because of this person. No, it's because of that person. It's because of this party. It's because of that party. You got to voice your, you must throw your garbage onto it. Amen. And we use social media, amen, to do it. You don't think, amen, that, 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 that amen, even though, well, it's true. Well, it's true. Well, you know, they're just, it's just, just true. Just because something is something that you believe to be true doesn't mean we need to we need to ignite a fire over it. If I was to give you and put a big pile of drugs in front of you, you wouldn't take it. At least I hope you wouldn't. Come on. See, hopefully you would say something like, I'm not stupid. Drugs ruin my life. I'm a Christian, and that's sin. See, if we see that, we, we, I would hope that's what we would do. So if that's what we would do when it comes to drugs, then why do we allow ourselves to speak the way we do? Doesn't, doesn't your words have the same effect? Doesn't, doesn't the sin still exist when we don't watch and we don't tame our tongue? So when we speak, it can really make us sound and look ugly. Just like drugs, uh, uh, the, the, the words that we use can ruin our life. Mm -hmm. We say, well, I'm a Christian, and that is sin, but is it an untamed tongue still sinful? Yes. And life on drugs brings destruction and destroys families. But don't the words that we speak have the same effect? Drugs, amen, when they enter into a person and it takes control, they can no longer, the, the addiction of sweeps them over, amen, and the, and the cravings overcome them, amen. It destroys lives. It destroys families, amen. Children become fatherless and motherless, amen. The jails become full, and it's all because of a drug, amen. And it destroys lives, amen. It, it breaks things up, marriages up, and families up, and destroys the hearts of children. Yes. But can't an untamed tongue have the same effect? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's so right. So many marriages are being... 
or being put through divorce, not because of an affair, not because of financial stress, not because of physical abuse, because of verbal abuse. That's right. Because they said something to hurt my feelings. I think I, I, I think a lot of a lot of marriages, they made a lot of their biggest fights have to do with, with words being spoke, amen, rather than actions being done. Well, I can deal with the action, that we can forgive, but your attitude behind it is what I don't like. Come on. Your, your, your response to me talking about it is what I don't like. And it's your words, amen, that will destroy, amen, a, a life. Just like the, the just, and I, and I use, amen, the comparison to drugs or, or alcohol because I think that's something simple that I think every one of us can, can, can comprehend and understand because we see it physically and there's a physical effect to it. But the comparison is not far off. The issue, Christian, is not that we are not able to tame our tongue. Mm -hmm. The issue is we choose not to tame our tongue. Yep. It's a choice. As your children get older, they are a direct reflection of their parents, of whoever it is that raised them. Not to say whoever raised them because they're not all raised by their, by their parents. I have a nephew, a man, he's he'll be 40 this coming year, he's 39 right now. He was raised with us. My mom raised him. He has a mom and she's 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 been blessed to come back to to, to reality with the rest of us that she's being blessed with her grandchildren now. But but the thing is is that he was raised with us. He's a reflection of my mom, he's a reflection of us. That's right. It's not a reflection of my sister, he's a reflection of us. So your children, they have a direct reflection. Your parents, they have a direct reflection of their parents, whoever it is that they spent the time is as they were growing up. The way they act, the way they speak, the way they respond. You ever seen a little boy, man, walk behind his dad or walk in front of his dad, and you see the dad walking, you see the little boy walking, they walk the same, they look the same. They have that. They have that reflection. All those things are a direct reflection of how they were raised and who raised them. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind. Your children or those that you've raised, even you, uncle, even you, aunt, who had your nephews and nieces around you a lot, those ones, they, they're a reflection of you. A lot of the things they do, is it's a reflection of what they seem to believe to be the right thing to do. But if, 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 if that's a reflection of who I am, if my children, my grandchildren become a, a, a direct and indirect reflection of me, then shouldn't I also have a reflection from someone else? In the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 15, the Bible says, For did you not, did you not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear? But, to re, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry, Abba, Father. So if, if we are now a child of God, aren't you supposed to be a, a, a direct reflection of who God the Father is? A reflection of who Jesus Christ is? See, the Bible says in the book of Romans, amen, Paul writes and says, he says that we have been given the spirit of adoption, amen. That we've been adopted into the royal family, amen. Under the blood of Jesus Christ, we become blood relatives, amen, to where we're, we're, we're under, we're children of God. So if that is the case, amen, shouldn't we now reflect who our Father is? Yes, come on. Shouldn't we reflect Jesus Christ in our lives when we speak? This is not part of your life that, that, that you can put aside and say it doesn't apply to you. This can and will be the thing that will keep you from making heaven your home. It'll, it'll keep you out of heaven if we don't learn, amen, how to control the thing, amen, God has given us the ability to do, amen, but we decide not to. See, in Genesis chapter 4, verse 8, it says, Now Cain talked, see, now Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass. See, this was, this was after the sacrifice, amen, where God was pleased with one and not the other. So it says, and Cain talked with Abel. And it came to pass when they were in the field 
that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him. See, the Bible says that God loved Abel's offering and not Cain's because it, it does not say that, that, that this is the reason why Cain killed his brother. But we know, amen, that God was displeased, amen, with Cain. And we know, amen, the Bible says here in Genesis 4, 8, that after the fact, amen, Cain has a conversation with Abel. There was words spoken. It said, it said in verse 8, now Cain talked with Abel, his brother. Then it goes straight from there that he killed him. See, there were words spoken and, and there was a conversation that took place. Uh, and, 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 and it was in that conversation that the curse took place. It was in that conversation that death was put upon earth. You see, the words we speak have the power to bring life. As God did when he spoke the world into existence. And they have the power also to bring death. What is coming out of your mouth? We think that we can say what we want. But so what? Nobody likes it? Too bad. That's false. It matters. And sometimes, more often than not, we need to not talk. Sometimes it's best to be quiet. Come on. Just, I'm not going to say a word. Go back to that old saying. Well, my mama told me that if you ain't got nothing that's nice to say, but don't say nothing at all. Mm -hmm. Don't sound like bad advice. As Christians, we're called to love. The Bible says they will know us by our love. Mm -hmm. And it's by our fruits they'll know us. The fruit of our mouth, amen, is rotten bananas, amen. Guess what they're going to know us as? If the fruit of our mouth smells like vomit, amen, guess what they're going to know us as? Here comes the vomit mouth again. But if the fruit of our, mouth, our lips, amen, speak forth love and encouragement, then guess what they're going to know you as? Now that's a man of God. That's a woman of God. How do you know? Talk to them for five minutes. You'll see. I take pride in the way I talk to people because I want to make sure, amen, that when I leave them, I leave a part of something. Matter of fact, we, we joke, we joke, there's a guy at work uh, in training and, and, and we joke around and I tell him, I go, you didn't know you worked with Michael Farrakhan, did you? We were talking about philosophy and all this stuff because we're getting into these deep conversations and I always bring the word of God to him. Just bring it hard and, and, and just, he'll be like, whoa, I never thought of that before. He goes, man, you're deep. I go, not so much I'm deep, just that I love God, man. I want to see God. And we know God has a plan for you, man. And I, I don't care about this whole you got you can't preach at work. Fire me. I don't care. My, 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 my thing is that I'm serving God. Whatever it is that, that happens, amen. God will protect me and bring forth something different. He'll take care of my needs. But the point today is what we say, the way we speak defines the Christianity within us. We have been given the spirit of adoption. We are part of the royal family. We are blood related to Jesus Christ. We have been, we have, we have been forgiven of our past and, and all of our iniquities, everything we've ever done. It's all been washed under the blood. We can no longer use our past and our family and our friends and our parents, amen, as an excuse as to why I talk the way I do because that's all been washed under the blood. God took care of that. He was smart. He knew what he was doing. He took care of that and washed it away, amen. Then he adopted us into his family and gave us a new name, amen. He gave us a new identity. He's given us a, a new life, amen. He wiped away the past of iniquity, amen, of sin, amen, to give us a brand new name, amen. So when we choose, amen, to jump back into what we came from, amen, it was our choice to jump back into that mud, amen, because God cleansed us. Yes, amen. There was mud that we dove into, but God cleansed us. See, tonight it's up to you. Will you continue to speak and not care? We allow God to change. Amen. And I like every about every I close with respect to Jesus. Amen. Tonight, 
you're listening, amen. These are things, amen, that, 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 that we deal with. And we speak the way we speak, and we don't give it a second thought. And sometimes when we're by ourselves, amen, we say out loud the things we shouldn't. You're driving along by yourself, somebody cuts you off, amen, you want to begin to speak in a way that you know you shouldn't. You're working alone, amen, you smash your finger, amen, it begins to hurt and throb, amen, you're shaking it off, but yet you're saying words that you know you shouldn't. Your kids come into you and they, and they spill something up on the floor or on your couch or on you, amen. And, and instead of, instead of a showing them compassion, amen, we begin to just blurt out things out to them that we know we shouldn't. Your spouse, amen, does something, amen, uh, that might have offended you, amen. But instead of showing love and, and forgiveness as God has shown you, amen, we want to we wanna lash out right back at them. We've been adopted into the royal family. We are above that. He's given us a new identity and washed away our sins. They've all been washed under the blood of Jesus Christ. We can no longer look at our past. We find our future because of the future has been given to us from God. And it has all been taken away from everything we've done in the past. Amen. So tonight, if God spoke to you, amen, I want you to take time to pray. Amen. Where you're at, you take time to pray. And seal it with God. And we thank you tonight for joining us. We thank you for being a part of us. Amen. And you know what? Uh, yeah, I want to remind you on Wednesday, we'll be here live at 7 o'clock. Come to the building. Come to the church. Amen. Come join us. Um, join us online. Join us in the building. But you know what? Allow God to use your life. Amen. On Wednesday as we go through the book of Romans. Amen. And continue to worship God. Amen. We thank you for joining us this evening, amen. So we're going we're gonna to end it here. We're going to bow our hearts, amen, and let's close in prayer. You know, Father, we thank you, God, tonight, God, for your word. We thank you for your message, God. God, let us be men and women, God, that are no longer ruled by our tongues. But God, let us be men and women that give you glory and give you honor, God. God, let us be, God, the child you have called us to be, God, and become a reflection of, of our Heavenly Father. Let us be a reflection of Jesus Christ. Let us no longer allow our tongues to rule over us, God. But let us, God, now rule over our tongue, God, as we speak blessing, God, and no more curses, God. As we speak life into others, God, just as you have spoken life. For the same power that rose Jesus Christ from the dead is the same, same power that we possess today, God. And I pray, God, we use that power as we speak. We thank you, God, for all that you're doing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.